speech for you coming from Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7. And, and, and I was thinking of something that Lady McCullough said a while back. She said, nothing in, nothing out. And, and, or garbage in, garbage out. And, 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 and basically, she was talking about the information. And, and if you don't put anything in, you can't pull anything out. And, and as we look in Judges chapter 7, uh, you look at a people of God who are being oppressed. And, 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 and in the midst of Judges chapter 7, God is going to give his people an exodus. He's going to give them an exodus without leaving because they're already in the promised land. They're just not reaping the benefits of the promise. They're already in the promised land, but, but, but God is going to give them an exodus from oppression in their territory. God is going to bless them right where they are at. In Exodus chapter 7. Reading from the NIV version of the Bible, if you would, please stand for the reading of the word. And we're going to read verses 1 through 7 together, even if your version of the Bible reads a little bit different. I'm sorry. Judges, Judges, Judges. Judges chapter 7, verse 1 through 7. Judges chapter 7, verses 1 through 7. And it reads, early in the morning, Jerubbaal, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Harat, the camp of Midian, was north of them in the valley near the hill of Moray. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men. Do, do y'all see that in your version of the Bible? Y'all saw that? Okay. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands, or Israel would boast against me. My own strength has saved me. Verse 3, now announce to the army, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 20,000 men left while 10,000 remained. Did y'all see that? Those are some hard numbers right there. 20,000 people just left. 20,000 soldiers just left. And now he's left with 10,000 soldiers and, and he's about to go into battle against 100,000. Verse 4, but the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many men. Take them down to the water, and I will thin them out for you there. Ooh, talk about faith. If I say this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. The Lord told him. Separate those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps from those who kneel down to drink. 300 of them drank from cupped hands, lapping like dogs. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. So just to put a little simple illustration. Lapping like a dog. Verse 7, the Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the others go home. If you would please repeat after me in prayer. Lord, Lord have, your way. have your way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You all may be seated. If I can use as a topic of sermon or a topic of text, it would be nobody move, nobody gets hurt. Nobody move, nobody gets hurt. Um, one of the challenges uh, for our black youth is that they don't have a strong identity, and this is a generalization. They don't have a strong identity, and they don't have strong self-esteem. And self-esteem self is that motivation to keep going and to keep pushing and to keep fighting. 
but they don't have a strong identity to keep pushing, keep moving, keep fighting because they haven't tapped into their identity. And when you know who you are in God, you could be born with a birth defect. But because your self-esteem is so strong because you know who you are in God, you could be crippled and you say, well, I don't care. I'm just going to crawl my way to victory. You, you could be in a wheelchair and you say, I'm going to roll myself to victory. Right. Are, are, are y'all, y'all, y'all picking up what, what I'm putting down? And, and, and the thing is, is that, 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 that when you know how, how powerful you are, then you go back to the text and be like, hold up, touch not mine anointing and do my prophets no harm. Because, because it ain't about what you do to me because I'm God's child and I'm God's favorite. You got to be careful what God's going to do to you. Uh, 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 because I believe King David said like this, this battle is not mine, it's, it's the Lord's. And, 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 and when you got the Lord on your side, that, that, that means that if God be for us, then it's more than all the world against us. And for some reason, uh, God likes to work with the remnant. And he, he, he likes to work with those who still remain. And I can't speak for everybody in here, but, but when my granny Edna used to make the spaghetti, it seemed like it tastes better the next day. And, 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 and sometimes I, I can't, do y'all remember Kool-Aid? Anybody remember Kool-Aid? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, 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 and the thing is, it, it, it seems like that, that last little corner w w was the sweetest corner of the Kool-Aid because that's where all the sugar uh, settled in and, and, and it was just a little bit sweeter and it was just a little bit thicker because because that was the remnant where everything remained and, and, and the thing is is that I believe that God has put so much glory in Mount Sinai because you decided to show up on today and God wants to do a great work but he just needs us to work together so that he can show up and be magnificent and that, that he can show up and, and work on our behalf that, that he can show up to defeat all of our enemies oh, um 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 so, so, so as we look at it in this particular context, these people have been severely oppressed, almost like the, the Israelites in Egypt before Moses uh, jumped in on the scene. They were being severely oppressed. And, and, and the thing is that they couldn't feed themselves. They couldn't feed their families. They, they, they didn't have any financial opportunities because at that time they had livestock. So they were raising cattle and raising sheep and raising uh, chickens. And, and basically because the, when the Midians would come in, they, they'll slaughter everything. That's right. That's right. They would kill everything. They'll burn everything. Mm -hmm. So then all of a sudden the men went high. The men left their natural habitats and started living in caves and clefts. The boys didn't have any role models. They didn't know who to look up to. Some of the women were in compromising states. And what I mean by compromising states is that they were doing things that they really wouldn't want to do, but they were doing things that they did so that they could put food on the table because the men were all in the clefts. They were all in the caves. And then God said, enough is enough. Come here, Gideon. I need you to get ready for battle. And as we look at the text, and as we look at our current situation, Mike Tyson says that everybody has a plan until they get hit in the face. Oh yeah, it, it does hurt, by the way. <laughs> Dr. Jerome Ross, professor of the Hebrew Bible, reminds us that every word written between Genesis 1-1 and Revelation 22-21 was written under oppression. It was either Egyptian oppression, Assyrian oppression, Babylonian depression, Persian depression, Greek depression, oppression, or Roman oppression. Martin Luther King said like this, cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expedience asks the question, is it, politic? Is it uh -huh. political? Uh -huh. Vanity asks the question, is it popular? Uh -huh. But conscience asks the question, is it right? All right. Yes, 
And there comes a time when, month, when one must take a position that is neither safe That's right. nor political, That's right. but one must take it because it is right. Is there anybody in here who says, I serve the Lord because it's right? Amen. I trust the Lord because it's right. So my first point is level up. And level up is when you take your game to the next level. Uh, Deacon Barker, as much as people love Michael Jordan... A lot of the guys that played with Mike didn't want to play basketball with Mike because he was so serious about the game. Uh, Kobe Bryant. A lot of folks, they love Kobe Bryant for what he was able to do on the basketball court. But some of his teammates were like, Kobe, you're taking this game too serious. But Kobe's mentality is whatever it takes to win. And right now, in the state of our youth, in the state of our community, in the state of our city, I really hope and believe that there are some men, that there's something boiling on the inside of them that says, hold up, whatever it takes for us to win. I'm, I'm hoping that, that some elders have something moving on the inside of them to where they're saying, I know this is not comfortable for me, but it's the right thing to do. Whatever it takes for us to win. And, and the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, two weeks ago, uh, we had about 10 youth coming to the foundation. We surveyed the youth for what were their chief concerns. And Sister Saunders... Their concerns, top three, number one, these are teenagers and preteens. Number one, Dr. Mundy, was death and dying. These are teenagers and preteens. The second concern was money. The third concern was grades in school. For a teenager and a preteen, why are you even concerned about death? Why are you even concerned about dying when, tip, when technically you haven't even hit the best years of living? Then the second concern is money. Why are you concerned about money when all you should have to focus on is number three, grades in school? Imagine if we eliminated number one. Imagine if we eliminated number two and all our youth had to focus on was number three. Not only will we have more female or black female vice presidents, we'll have black female mayors and black female Supreme Court justice. We'll have black female state attorneys, black female mayors and council members. But, but, but we have to make sure that we're addressing their concerns and their issues because if we're not addressing their concerns and their issues, we're going to repeat the same cycle over and over again. And God told Gideon, that's not going to happen. So when we look at level up, my mind went to an old Negro spiritual. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom over me. And before I be a slave, I be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Yes, sir. I want this to marinate in your spirit, man. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom over me. And before I be a slave, I be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom over me. And before I be a slave, I be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. 
I want our youth to be free from death. I want our youth to be free from dying. I want our youth to be free from debt. I want our youth to live and I want our youth to have every promise that God has destined for them. And this is where I ask, can I get a witness? But in order for us to get there, we got to have leadership. Uh, in my doctoral program at NYTS, they were talking about two types of transformational leadership. You got pseudo transformational leadership and then you have true transformational leadership. Yeah. Pseudo means false. Yeah. So basically with pseudo, you have someone that is self-consumed, exploitable, warped moral values, and power hungry. You say, that sounds like the former president. Uh -huh. <laughs> transformational leadership is authentic, socialized, concerned with the collective good. Pseudo transformational leadership looks like Adolf Hitler, Saddam Hussein, Jim Jones, Jezebel. Transformational leadership looks like John F. Kennedy, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and Harriet Tubman. People can only perform to the level that they've been prepared. So one of my professors, uh, Dr. Vernon Mason, he said that Raphael Warnock, who's a U.S. Senator there in Georgia, they said you got to look at his roots coming out of Georgia and he always looked up to Martin Luther King, which is why he went to Morehouse College. Yes, sir. But then why would he go to Morehouse College when, when, because Martin Luther King's not there? But, but, but then he said, well, the legacy is still there. And with the legacy that's still there, you got people like the Reverend Benjamin Mays. And, and then when you're looking at Howard Thurman, that meaning though, even though these people have gone on to be with the Lord, the legacy is still there. So, so what happens is, is that now you look at him graduating from Morehouse, going up to New York to Abyssinian Baptist Church. And what happens is now you're sitting under the tutelage of those that like Samuel DeWitt Proctor. And you're looking at the, the tutelage of Reverend Butts. And then you're looking at the fact that when he left Abyssinia, he started to get tutelage from Reverend Dr. James Cone, who's the founder of Black Liberation Theology, which means that he doesn't look at the people of the Bible as being Caucasian. He looks at the people of the Bible of being black folks and meaning that, listen, if God had used his people to deliver his people, then his mind had to be liberated. So basically, it was just a setup for success. And for our youth, we want to set them up for success. All right. My second point. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Now, this is figurative. But this was also literal. December 7th, 1941. During World War II. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition was from Reverend how Maurice he went by how and during the bombing of Pearl Harbor he didn't want the sailors to get caught up in all the explosives going on but he needed them to stay focused on the mission and not distracted by the fire and I was listening to Reverend Jeremiah Wright who's also an ex-marine and he was saying that when he was in Paris Island, I believe it is, or something like that, did I pronounce it right? And, and he said that, that they, they were having Reverend McCullough at night taking his, his weapon apart and then putting it back together. Yeah. And, 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 and they was like, well, why you got me doing this in the dark? And they said, because when you go over to Nam, you ain't got time to ask a friend to help you out. <laughs> So, so, so if you can do it here in the dark, you, you, when you get the pressure, you're going to be able to perform. And, and the thing is that sometimes our youth, they haven't been trained to be able to perform under pressure because, because nobody has been sitting there monitoring and mentoring and, 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 and making sure that they are on the right track for success. So watch this. If we look down in Judges chapter 7. And we go down to verse 19 through 21. It says, Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. Just after they had changed the guard, they blew their trumpet and broke the jars that were in their hands. 
Three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the chars, grasping to the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets. They were to blow, they shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran, crying as they fled. So when we look at praise the Lord and pass the ammunition, these men, literally all they had was some jars and some trumpets. And they yelled for the sword of the Lord and Gideon. So I want to make sure I put this in context. You got 100,000 soldiers fighting 300 men. But the 300 men got God. The 100,000 soldiers have weapons. But what they did was is that they went out with the trumpet. They blew their trumpet. And then what they did was is they started yelling, for it is the sword of God. And I need you to understand something, that when you got a praise on the inside, what happens is, is that you got to understand that God inhabits the praises of his people. So if you are in a room and you don't like the temperature, you have the ability to adjust the thermostat. And the way that you adjust the thermostat is to give God something to work with. What do you give him to work with? You give him your praise. So basically, when you are in trouble and you want relief from the trouble, you don't go into a crying party. You go into a praise party. And what happens is they said the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So when you look at your trumpet, some of us may not be able to blow the trumpet. But what you got is some praise. So is there anybody in here who can give your God some praise in this place? Well, you said, well, I got the praise part and I get the trumpet, but what about the sword? Is there anybody in here who says I'm going to trust in God's word? Is there anybody in here who can give your God some praise in this place? Uh, uh, uh. Some folks look at you and they, 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 they see the glory, but they don't know the story. They don't know all the stuff that you've been through. They don't know all the stuff that you had to climb your way out of. But, but, but what you got to tell them is that, baby, you got to learn how to perfect your praise. Because when you perfect your praise, God's got to show up on the scene. Is there anybody in here who's ever seen God work in your life? Is there anybody in here who can say, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, can somebody give your God some praise in this place? Hey! 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 Is there anybody in here who says, he freed my soul? Is there anybody in here say he made me whole? Is there anybody in here who can ha, 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 flex on the enemy? Hey, somebody say we're still praising. We're still believing. We're still worshiping. We're still celebrating. Because we still got God on our side. Can somebody shabak your God in this place? Oh. Somebody look at your name and say, nobody move. Somebody look at your name and say, nobody move. Somebody say, nobody move. Nobody, nobody move. Nobody move. Nobody move. Nobody move. Yes, yes, yes. Because this area right here is covered by the Lord. Can anybody over there say, is it, you, you got, uh, is, it, is anybody back there say he's covered? I, I, God's got this right here. Hold on, hold on. I need somebody with some audacious faith. Can somebody just open up your arms and just say, God got this rope? Oh, oh, oh. Hold on, hold on. I need you to go horizontal and vertical with me. Can somebody say, God's got our church? Oh, my goodness. Can somebody just get crazy with it and say, God's got our babies? Can somebody just get a little crazy? Somebody say, God's got our youth? Somebody look up and say, You're covered by the blood. Come on, come on, come on, come on, your baby's covered by the blood. Somebody said God is working it out. 
He's working it out in your house. He's, he's working it out in your home. He's, he's working it out in your family. Somebody say, God's got this. Hey. 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 I'm going to close with this. Last point is nobody move, nobody gets hurt. John 10.10 10 says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I can't speak for everybody in here, but that abundance ain't when you die and go to heaven. That's for you when you're right here on earth. Oh, when we get over, when we cross over to the other. No, baby, we're going to get that right right here. And we're going to get that right right now. So watch this, watch this. Some call them Alpha and Omega. Some call them beginning and the end. Some call him the bishop of our souls. Some call him the comforter. Some call him deity. Some call him Elohim. Some call him great God. Some call him healer. Some call him incredible. Some call him Jehovah. Some call him king of kings. Some call him Lord of lords. Some call him Messiah. Some call him mighty in battle. Some say he never lost a battle. Some call him omnipresent. Some call him omnipotent. Some call him omniscient. Some call him provider. Some call him protector. Some call him prince of peace. Some call him redeemer. Some call him savior. Some call him the great I am. Some call him victorious. Some call him the lily in the valley. Some call him the bright and morning star. Some call him wonderful counselor. Some call him Yeshua. Some call him Yahweh. But right here, right now, can somebody say Jesus? He's a bad man. He's a bad man because if he can save me, is there anybody out there that says if he can save me, if he can save me, then he can save anybody. Huh. Uh, um, uh, this is the last thing I want for crowd participation. I just need your help for just a second. Can everybody get on your feet for just one second? Listen, 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 listen. Uh, there's a word in Hebrew for life. Yeah. And the word for Hebrew in life in this particular context is C-H-A-Y-A-H. And the Strong's lexicon is H2421. And C-H-A-Y-A-H is pronounced Haya. So what I need y'all to do for just one time, can y'all just say Haya? Somebody say Haya. That means you shall live and not die. Can somebody say hi ya? That means you shall live and not die. Can somebody say hi ya? That means that you shall live and not die. Can somebody say hi ya? That means that you shall live and not die. Can somebody say hi ya? That means that you shall live and not die. Can somebody say hi ya? Hi ya! Hi ya! Hi ya! Hiya! 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 That means you going to live. And if you die, our God is able to resurrect. Is there anybody in here who can give your God some praise in this place? God bless you. God bless you. Ah, hiya. Ah, oh, hiya. That means there may be someone here right now who want to live and not die. And you have an opportunity to experience this hiya by coming and giving your life to Christ just as you are. Don't care if you're wounded, don't care if you're sad, messed up, tore up from the head down, and messed up from the flow up. You have an opportunity now to come and get some higher from God on high and be covered in the blood where Jesus Christ allowed him to hang out on that cross. The doors of the church open. You may come as a candidate for baptism. You may come by letter or you may come by Christian experience. 
but this is something you don't want to run away from. This is something you need to have in your life. Come now as the choir lead us in a selection and give your life to Christ. the church open you may come as a candidate for baptism you may come by letter or you may come by Christian experience One more time, choir, everybody. You may be seated for a moment. few moments we're going to uh, pray and also uh, <coughs> pray for our offering. Um, Pastor Nixon, thank you once again for a sermon such as full of power. Uh, old preachers like us, we say, did not our hearts burn. So you, uh, every time you preach, you just get stronger and stronger. And God bless you for that and for that word. Uh, do we have any visitors with us today? If you'd be kind enough to just stand, I'd just like to acknowledge you. Madam, I want to thank you for visiting here with us. I hope and pray uh, that you enjoyed what you heard today. And I hope and pray that you would be come back and visit with us once again. If you did not get a little red card to fill out, I ask that they would give you one so you can fill that out so we have a record of your visitation here with us. And I want to remind you, if, if not you, maybe some other people that you may know who may need help or assistance as we do provide food here. So uh, for groceries, for people who are out there, somebody you may know yourself. But we thank you for being here with us. Are you from Jacksonville? Yes. Okay, and your name, please? Sister Ramon Roberts. So God bless you, Sister Ramon Roberts, and we hope to see you. Ramon Roberts. Yes. You know, I have to be careful with you, Mike. When I hear things fall, I get nervous with you. you yeah, my heart go to jumping with you. That's a friend of yours. God bless you. Thank you for inviting her in. I need to see all three musicians right after worship service about something. And I need to make sure that I uh, hook up with uh, 
the trustees tomorrow. I got a few things that I need to discuss with you as well. Um, just want to remind everybody, I got that little board over there, and it's going to be important that we uh, contribute for the windows that we're going to put in the back. That's our shortfall, and I'll discuss that with the trustees tomorrow, and then you'll hear something. You'll get something in writing from me in the mail about it. Um, I want to tell you a little story. And as pastor was preaching, it just started pressing my heart about set our youth up for success. Uh, it was Thursday. We were down here, I think it was, and we had the food. And I got some food. And I took it to a family. Now, I'm not going to, I mean, for the record who the family is, but I'm not going to call the name of this young lady that uh, when I got there, I was told to go there and knock on the door. And they had called her and told her that I was bringing some food. I didn't have a problem with that. But for whatever reason, when I did, she came out. She came out to my truck and was sitting in the back. She was only 16 years old. And I knew, I said, I've seen this young lady somewhere before. And I believe it was here in the church. She may have come as a guest or somebody. But because, you know, 16, you can't make them go to school. But I was wondering why she was home. Well, she was in a, in a different school. And, and I said, well, are you all right? You know, how's life going? How's life treating you? That kind of thing. I'm giving this stuff out of the back of the truck. And she said, Pastor, um, I've been in, no. I said, how's life treating you? You're staying focused. She said, Pastor, I've been in trouble. I said, you've been in trouble. Just looking at people, you wouldn't think. But this young lady had been arrested for uh, breaking and entering. She had been arrested for possession of a firearm. She had been arrested for this, 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 and this. And I said to myself, my God, listen, she only 16. But y'all remember I told you the fastest growing group of people that's getting in trouble right now are not the males. It's the females. I immediately said to her, I said, this has happened because you have no direction in your life. She told me in the school she now has a life coach that's looking out for her. She's getting ready to start working. But when she said that, and she said where she was going, and I thought about, that's my nephew owned that business, and I said, okay. So, uh, and I said, well, you, you need a life coach. You need, I said, what about your father? She, she said, I don't have a father. And that's part of the problem, too, that these young people don't have male figures in their life. My heart started bleeding because she, she, she sounded intelligent, she looked intelligent, you know, it, it's obvious all she needed was somebody to say, you can be successful in life. And so, uh, you know, I pass the food on, I'm gonna eventually reach back out to her mother. I talked with her mother on the phone, her mother texted me that evening and said, thank you for what we, what we did, and I'll, I'll get with uh, you and a couple others so we can try to help them as much as we can. But Think about that. Think about how we can help these young people be successful in their life. Now, and I don't want to wait because it's for young as well as uh, adults. Starting in February, I'm going to open up the 700 plus club here in this church. The 700 plus club means no matter how long it takes, we're going to help people repair their credit and get their credit score up to at least 700. It may take a year, it may take two, but if they do that, we now open up a whole lot of things for them to get things without having to go and go to these uh, money places and get all this high interest stuff and they can buy, get better credit cards. You know, literally at 700, you can walk in a, listen to me, do you realize if you had a score of 700 on your credit, you can walk into a car dealer and not even have a job, and they'll still give you a car? Amen. But you got to empower people with that. You, you, you can't spend. Them credit cards will get you in deep kimchi. 
And so, and if you're going to spend them, you got to hurry up and pay them off. So uh, that is part of what we are trying to do. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a friend of mine who runs a CDC. He can get people in homes now paying $650 a month. Y'all heard what I just said. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a, yeah, 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 yeah. And the credit score only has to be 650 to do that. So you just got to work on it to get it done. So I don't want to be a pastor and don't do anything to empower people. I got to take care of the entire flock. So not only do we want to feed, we want to worry about your finances and everything. May I get to have, ask you to stand, please, as we pray. Our Father and our God now, the things that keep happening in this world in which you created. The chaos, the hardships, the suffering, the pain, the difficulties of just living from one day to the next. You did not tell us that life would be a bed of roses. You did not say that we would not have difficult days. But you did say, as our God, that in our time of need, if we come to you and ask, you said that you would be there to help us through that we can make it from one day to the next. So as the God of this universe, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Rachel, Leah, and Rahab, we come before you now as bad children before a good father, and we confess to you that every one of us have made mistakes every one of us have erred every one of us have sinned and I, I heard Pastor Nick say put the blood over the door I heard that him say that you allowed your son Jesus Christ to go and hang on Calvary's cross for us. And there he took on the sins of the world. So we want to say thank you. Want to ask you to forgive us for our sins. <coughs> Toss them in the sea of forgetfulness never to come up again. We thank you that it is not you God that when we ask you to forgive us. That come and try and oppress us but Satan who's trying to tell us you won't forgive us. But you said, if we ask anything in your name, that you are just, you're willing, you're able to forgive us of our sins. And so now, God, I told the story about this young 16-year-old girl. God, have mercy on her. Touch not only her, but her family. God, help her to see the light through the man by the name of Jesus. Help us, God, to walk in the light that other men, women, boys, and girls may see Jesus in us. And now, God, as I lift this prayer up to you, I realize that there are those who are in the hospital. 
we talked about Sister Linda Malpress, the fact that they had to take her foot off. But God, I, I was told the very next day when she came out of surgery, she was her old self again. Lord, thank you. Because you can do anything but fail. We have many people who are members of this church. They are homebound. They have various illnesses and diseases. But you've still been keeping them. And so now, God, we are eternally grateful for your love, your kindness, and your grace. So we just want to say thank you. Thank you for our young people. Help them, God, in their time of need. Let them stay focused on their education and not on money. Not worrying about death. Thank you, God, for this day, this time, this moment. Because I don't know what everybody needs, but here's what I do know. The earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. And you know everything about them. So whatever they need, God, ask you to grant it according to all your riches and glory. And so now, 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 God, stop by the hospitals. Go in those intensive care rooms and deliver those families up off of those COVID-19 and heart ailments. Stop by the nursing home and let them know that they're not there by themselves. Stop by the family that's having trouble. Stop by the marriages that's about to fall apart and put them back together again. Stop by, stop by God, the churches and, and let them stand on the promises of God. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, 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 Father. We ask you to go into the houses of our family members. And let them know that they're not there by themselves. Let them know that if they keep looking to the hill. All their help will show up. And so now is it come to this time when we bring in our tithes, we, we bring in our offerings, God, I ask you to bless those who have. Bless those who have not. But whatever we receive, it will be used for the benefit of your kingdom. This I ask, this I pray, this I plead. In thy son Jesus name. And all of God's children saying amen. Amen and amen. Thank you. Come ushers. They already have.
All right, let's give our ushers a hand. Thank you. <coughs> Y'all sure she can take that heavy basket? <laughs> Isn't that all right? She got it. Once again, I want to thank God for the sermon. And Pastor Nix is, God bless you. Thank you for that. Uh, Nehemiah 8 and... Five through six said, Ezra opened the book in full view um, of all the people. Since he was elevated above everyone. I remember when I became the pastor here, uh, I had been told that Mount Sinai was normally when they read the scripture, there was no requirement necessarily for them to stand up. And so when I asked everybody to stand up, I never forget it, Deacon Wilcox was the one. Uh, uh, I asked everybody to stand up, and I noticed, everybody kind of, I said, okay. Uh, says, I, I, so I turned to this text right here, and I read it. And it said, as he opened it, all the people stood up. May we stand, please? And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and with their hands uplifted, all the people said, Amen. Amen. Then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. That's way uh, Andre Crouch got the song. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. Let the church say, Amen. Let us sing together. Everybody, oh, let the church, let the church, God has spoken. Everybody, once again, let the church say amen. Let the church. Oh Lord, come now, sweet. Now, eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the message and the messenger. We thank you, God, for this day in our lives, for this is the day you have made. We have rejoiced and we will be glad in it. But this is a day that we have seen up to this point that we shall never ever see again. So we thank you for it. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your kindness. And now, 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 dear Father, as we prepare to leave this place, as I always ask, as I always pray, that these our people shall never ever leave your presence. I ask, I ask God continuously for a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit in their lives wherever they are, whatever they're doing, no matter where they may go. Because we need you. 
In times like this, you are all we got. So God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, 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 may the grace of our Father, may the sweet, holy communion of the Holy Spirit, Lord, may it rest. Lord, we don't just want it to rest upon them. We, we want it to rule in them. And not just now, but now, henceforth, and forevermore, let us all sing together now. Let the church say, come on and sing it like you mean it. Come on and lift him up now. Lift them holy hands up. Lift them up and say it. Let the church. God, please bless them individually. And please bless them collectively. God has spoken. God bless you. Thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Ah. Uh, let the church say amen. Uh, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Just say amen. I'm talking about that's amen. Just say amen. Amen. Say amen again. Amen. Say amen again. Hallelujah. And amen. Ah, uh, y'all, y'all stop. Y'all stop. Y'all stop. Y'all stop.